So, you're tired of religious and fruitless worship. You've been taught law with grace. You're more confused now than you were when you joined church. There is hope, come visit us at Walk in Truth Christian Fellowship Church and hear the teaching of the grace of God, which sets you free. We worship at the Universal Church of Jesus Christ Building, located at 2301 Wallace Avenue, Overland, Missouri, 63114. The times of worship are 8.30 a.m. on Sunday and 7 p.m. on Tuesday. You may also join us on Facebook at the Walk in Truth Christian Fellowship page or the Walk in Truth Radio Network YouTube page. All are welcome and we look forward to teaching you the truth about God, teaching you to be committed, accountable, and responsible to the things of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. Christian Fellowship Church uh, Bible Study. Welcome, good evening everyone. Hello, hello, hello on the phone. Hello. Hello, how are you guys doing on the phone? Good. Okay, welcome to Bible Study. Walker True Christian Fellowship Church Bible Study. Um, we're not going to be in Judges today. We're going to kind of preview what um, I believe is the next step for Christianity, do the next step basically for our church and other churches. And uh, when uh, the first of the year comes, I'll be teaching uh, for a good part of the year on this. And if you if you go to Facebook, you go those who are on the phone, you go ahead and mute your phones now, uh, so we can uh, go ahead and get started. Go ahead and mute your phones. And uh, if you want to go to Facebook Live, go to Walk of Truth. Christian Fellowship Facebook Live again. Welcome everyone. And what we're going to talk about today, I think it's going to be exciting. It's going to be fun. We're going to talk about Christian mindset. Christian mindset. And we're going to talk about the next for the next year, mindsets, motivations, and methods. It's so important as Christians that even though we learn the Bible, we have to, the Bible is clear that our mind has to be engaged. There's so many scriptures about our mind and our mindset. And what I want to say about your mindset, your mindset at any deter any point in time determines what you think, how you feel, and how you're going to react. Your circumstances, incidents, and accidents of life help make you who you are. And you have to weigh those in light of the scriptures to come up with a, a Christian mindset. Now, religion, the way you was raised, where you were born, your economic status, Made your racial uh, designation, even maybe in your sexual orientation, may limit you when it comes to the things of God because each one of them has a label on it and labels limit. But as Christians, if you really read the Bible carefully, you'll see a host of people throughout the Word of God that, when confronted with a circumstance, incident, or accident, they raised above that mindset that they were labeled with and went on to do glorious things for God. So what we want to do is think about the mindset we need to go into this 21st century uh, after COVID, after all the things we've been through, and go where God wants us to go. Think how God wants us to think. Because it's crucial, because I want to encourage you to understand you are unlimited in Christ. The Bible tells us that we have liberty in Jesus. The Bible also tells us that all things are lawful for us, but, all, but some things are not expedient. That means that if we're Christ-minded, we can live temporally, but think eternally. And when you begin to think eternally, you begin to look at things different. That's when you can say, uh, look at a mountain and say, be removed. That's when you can conquer the giants. That's when you can move forward in faith. And the key to living an abundant life in Christ right here eternally is to truly understand the mindset of walking by faith. Because that is the only way we please God. The scripture goes, it's impossible to please God without faith. So what we want to do is learn to unleash the power of our mind through, through the unction of the Holy Spirit or through the power of the Holy Spirit that every believer has so that we can live an abundant life here, looking forward to our life to come, 
but truly living out our destiny in a good way, in a positive way, in a way that brings others to Christ. Sometimes religion makes makes coming to Christ so mundane, so boring. I got to go to church. I got to go to this. Now think about this, Sister Nancy. What if we just change one thing in your mindset from this? Instead of saying, I got to go to church, what about if I say, I get to go to church? Amen. Just that. Switches your mindset. Instead of saying, I got to go to church, I get to go to church. Well, what is that principle? That's a principle of, of looking at the fact that church and fellowshipping together is something of a privilege that you get to do. Do I got to pay my tithes and offerings or do I get to pay my tithes and offerings? See, it comes from a well, even just saying it, it's a different tone. Because when I when I think I'm privileged, when I think when I get out of the entitlement or the mundane or the fact that I may not want to, then if I look at it as a privilege that I get to, then I'll find that I'll enjoy it more. That's why the Bible says he loves a cheerful giver. A giver of what? Giver of your time, giver of your talent, giver of your gift. But when you look at it as something that you've got to do because you're compelled to do it or because somebody ordered you to do it or your religious affiliation tells you you must do it, then that takes the joy out of it. So we want to get in the mindset that is beneficial for us to walk through this life. And I'm telling you, just that, instead of got to, you get to. Instead of say, I got to go to work, think about it. You get to go to work. Because guess what? There's some people that don't have a job right now and would love to get to go to work. So just changing our mindset and our vocabulary and the way we think. What are some of the things that limit you in your mind? The way you grew up, things people said to you, they, they, they bring a halt to your dreams, they bring a halt to your imagination, they bring a halt to your relationship with God. Some of you have so, such uh, uh, stagnant notions when it comes to dealing with Jesus that you, you can't enjoy the Holy Spirit that's in you. It's like dragging you through over glass. It's such a hard pull when all you have to do is start renewing your mind. And that's, the, that's something of the will. Sanctification, you can participate in. Yes, you're going to finish. Yes, you're going to get to the end. But wouldn't it be nice if you could enjoy the sanctification that you're going through as God takes you through the valleys and the shadows and the sunshine and the rain? Even the rain could be looked upon as I get to experience the rain. When I talked about Sunday, the perfect, the, the tailor-made storm. The tailor-made storm is not something we look forward to, but if we can find God in it, we can say, God, I see you and thank you for sending me through the storm because because of the storm, I have a better relationship with you and therefore I look at things totally different. It's a mind thing. The mind is so important. That's why it tells us to what? To renew our mind. Let this mind be in you that's also what? In Christ Jesus. What kind of mind did Christ Jesus have? He had a mind set on God and being having a mind set on God, even though he was a man, he could go to sleep in the middle of a storm. And what we look for with a great mindset with Christ is the fact that, that the ultimate goal is to find peace. Peace in every aspect of our life. Not so much a mindset that will get us things because it's true, you will get things, you will have things. But your goal is never to have things or not have things without having peace. Amen. Okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to examine a narrative. Open your Bibles to uh, 1 Samuel chapter 17. The familiar story of David and Goliath. And we're going to kind of analyze the mindset that in this narrative. Now I want you to you know the story, but I want you to get all your preconceived notions about the story out. You also always should approach the Bible with fresh eyes. Meaning that even though you know the story, ask God to show you something that you've never seen before in the scripture. Not that you made up in your mind, but something that truly is in the scripture that you didn't see before. I always have an aha moment because I approach the scriptures as if they are new every time. If he renews his mercies every morning, then he renews the understanding of his scriptures every morning. And you can study the facts, the figures, and you can bounce all over the Bible, but till you seek the revelation of God, his righteousness in what he's written to us, then you'll gain a better understanding and then you will be on this journey of a different mindset, a limited mindset, a limitless mindset in Christ Jesus. Okay? So let's look at this narrative 
and let's follow along. Let's pick out his mindset and just think about our mindset. So we're going to cover what he what he could be thinking, what could hold him back, how did he go forward, what was his mindset, what was his motivation, what was his method to conquer the giant. Method, mindset, motivation. And I'll have some charts on that later, but right now we're just getting started, so this is just an introduction. Again, we'll be dwelling into this in the first part of the year more in depth, but let's just look at this narrative because narratives gives us an idea of a situation, incident or accident, or circumstance, incident or accident, that requires a decision. You are not mindless robots. God has freed you to make decisions. And I want to give you a secret. Everybody's worried about making a bad decision. The worst decision you can make is a decision that's not made by faith. Because the Bible tells us without faith it's impossible to please God. I tell people, since you are free and you have liberty, make the decision in faith. And if God wants to correct you, he will. But he's not going to draconiously punish you because you made a decision in faith. If you made a decision in faith, you're not making a decision that is so contrary to his word that he wants to hurt you. No, he'll guide you by faith into the where you want to be. So it, our mind has to be engaged. Our faith has to be utilized so we can move forward. So, Sister Nancy, let's start at, 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 at 1 Samuel chapter 17 at verse 1. Now the Philistines gathered their armies for battle. And they were gathered at Soko, which belongs to Judah, and encamped between Soko and Ezekah in Ephesdamon. Mm -hmm. And Saul and the men of Israel were gathered and encamped in the valley of Elah and drew up in line of battle against the Philistines. And the Philistines stood on the mountain on one side and Israel stood on the mountain on the other side with a valley between them. And there came out from the camp of the Philistines a champion named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a fan. He had a helmet of bronze on his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail, and the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of bronze. And he had bronze armor on his leg, and a javelin of bronze slung between his shoulders. The shaft of his spear was like a weaver's beam, mm -hmm. and his spear's head weighed 600 shekels of iron, and his shield bearer went before him. He stood and shouted to the ranks of Israel, Why have you come out to draw up for battle? Am I not a Philistine, and are you not servants of Saul? Choose a man for yourselves, and let him come down to me. If he is able to fight with me and kill me, then we will be your servants. Okay, let's stop right there for a second. So if we had to start with the first character that we see in this, we see Goliath, the champion of the Philistines. What kind of mindset does Goliath have, do you think? What kind of mindset do you think he has? That he couldn't be defeated. Speak up. He couldn't be defeated. He couldn't be defeated. Confident. Confident. He was assured because of his stature that he could defeat anybody that came before him. Okay? He was not going to let the number of Israelites stop him because he was considered a giant. Yeah. Now, you would think... He would look at the number of them, but he, he felt, his mindset was, he could not be defeated. Now, when you, as a, as a person, deal with a person who believes they're not, can be, they, they can't be defeated, that is really a hard person to deal with because that person's confidence can overcome you and then you can be defeated. You see, it's his mindset. You see how he's doing? He's actually, he's going to challenge them with his words to scare them and make them believe that he is uh, he can't be defeated. So his words are words of confidence in the midst of a battle. What does that show us that we need? We need the words of confidence in the midst of a battle. Where do we get these words from? The word of God. The word, the God goes before us as our shield. We say he's our rock, he's our strength, he's our shield. We have to use those words in our mind so we can go forward just like Goliath. Goliath may be the villain, but we can learn something from Goliath. Goliath figured because of his stature, he was undefeatable. 
And I want to challenge you, because of your stature in Christ, you know what? You're undefeatable. Okay? I want to change your mindset. So many Christians live below their level of understanding of who they are in Christ Jesus. You say the words, we're more than conquerors through Christ who strengthens us. But when it comes down to, to living your everyday life, you live a defeated life. You live a life always complaining. You live a life telling me more of what you can't Even in the congregation that we have, some people tell me more about what they can't do than what they can do. They actually believe they can't do this. They can't understand this. Well, if you believe you can't, there's no amount of preaching I can do to get you to believe you can. So we have to change our mindset. We have to learn how to have a Goliath mindset, but a David heart. Amen. 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 Goliath is a villain, but I can appreciate his attitude. Yeah. yeah. Because his mindset is that he's not going he's not going to be defeated. His method is that he's a warrior. His motivation is he wants to rule over the Israelites. Okay? Go ahead. But if I prevail against him and kill him, mm -hmm. then you shall be our servants and serve us. And the Philistine said, I will fight the ranks of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. When Saul and all Israel heard these words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. Now think about this. When he heard the what? The words. The words. Not even his stature anymore. When they heard the words along with his stature, not only were they Afraid, but they were perplexed, confused, bewildered. How many times have you let people's words bewilder you? And from bewilderment is a small jump to being living in fear. Okay? As, as a saint of God, we say he did not give us a spirit of fear, right? right. But of what? Power, love, and Why did he say power first? Because power is what you need. You need to think powerful. And the only way you can think powerful, now watch this, pay attention, is to be responsible for what you think. If you take responsibility for what you think as a child of God, God has promised to give you power. There's an old saying in the comic book, it's Spider-Man. With great power comes great responsibility, right? Mm -hmm. Think about it like this. With great responsibility, when you accept your responsibility, like Goliath has done as the warrior, comes great power. God's going to give you power because you're willing to take the challenge. So many of us have great gifts locked up inside of us that God can use, the body of Christ can use, but you spend so much trying, time trying to imitate other people that you believe are giants in the faith Versus God allowing you to be who you are to him in, in the faith. And walk the truth, we have a saying, crow like you crow. You don't need to be like me or nobody else. You are uniquely fit to this particular body. And you bring your own unique gifts to the body that you're fitted to. And when you try to be someone other than who you are, you rob me of the opportunity to enjoy and learn from the gift that God has given you to this body. So when you shrink back, when you say I can't, Guess what? We can't. Because either we all are going to get there or we're not going to get there. Okay? So it's a mindset. So Goliath, words and his statue scared them, perplexed them. And in a one way, rightfully so, because he took responsibility to be the champion of Philistines. Yeah. They were not taking responsibility to champion of God. But he took the champion. See, being a champion is not good or evil. That's neutral. Who you're fighting for determines good or evil. But again, he took responsibility to say, <coughs> excuse me, I am the champion of the Philistines. And that bring me a man, and if I defeat him, you will serve us. And if he defeats me, we'll serve you. But as we see in Goliath's tone, Goliath didn't believe that nobody could defeat him. He wasn't worried about being defeated, was he? Because they had been there for a while. And he came out every day, like, who gonna fight me? And, and, and Saul, being the king, 
they couldn't find a man in his whole tribe, in the whole nation of Israel of fighting age that will, would take the mantle and fight Goliath. The one who challenged not only the nation of Israel, but actually cursed the God of Israel. Now you have to remember, Goliath and them know about Mo, uh, 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 Moses. They know about how God has broke down the wall at Jericho. They know about how the Israelites had come into the land of Canaan. But we studied in Judges how they drifted away and now they end up in this situation. Because their minds weren't connected to the God that had delivered them. One of the biggest attributes of God that your mindset has to get used to is the God that sustains. Mm -hmm. And the God that sustains is a God not only delivers, but he can sustain you during your time of trouble, during your tailor-made storm. And that's a great power, but you have to have the mindset to take advantage of the God who sustains you. Okay, go ahead. Verse 12. Now David was the son of an Ephratite mm -hmm. of Bethlehem in Judah named Jesse, who had eight sons. Now Jesse had eight sons. Now watch this. In the days of Saul, the man was already old and advanced in years. The three oldest sons of Jesse had followed Saul to battle. So Jesse had three sons, oldest sons, out of the eight, followed Jesse to battle. Go ahead. And the names of his three sons who went to battle were Eliab, the firstborn, and next to him, Abinadab, and the third, Shammah. David was the youngest. The three elders followed Saul, but David went back and forth from Saul to feed his father's sheep at Bethlehem. So in other words, David had been to the front line many times. David went back and forth to Saul, back and forth to the front line. He left and went back and forth to feed the sheep, to take care of his family's business. Go ahead. For 40, for 40 days. Now think the, about this. For 40 days. Now we don't know how many times he, uh, uh, he did days. this, but this is that typical number, 40 days. Go ahead. For 40 days, the Philistine came forward and took his stand morning and evening. So twice a day, 80 times. The Philistine came and challenged, now I want you to pay attention to this, thanks to God, challenged the mindset of the Israelites. And in 40 days, if your mindset is being challenged and you don't accept the challenge, you will not change. He was cementing the fear in them. He was cementing the perplexity in them. The first day, they probably felt good, but by the 35th day, they were totally afraid. They were totally perplexed. They were totally defeated. And all that had been exchanged, not even a blow, but words. What are the words that you saying in your head, in your mouth, and you lying in your ear gate that hold you back from your destiny of doing what God has called you to do in Christ Jesus? And see, this permeates throughout your life. It's just not one thing or the other. It's like if you have the mindset of Christ and you can do all things through Christ Jesus and you're more than a conqueror, that will not only permeate your relationship with God, but it will actually influence the way you deal with others. The reason why you don't is believe is 90% of it is that you believe you can't. Not you, you don't have the skill set because you can learn skill sets. And once a skill set is learned, it's never forgotten. It's like riding a bike. You might not be able to ride as fast as you could when you was younger, but guess what? I believe I can still get on the bike without killing myself. <laughs> yeah. I believe I can still ride a skateboard at least for 10 feet without hurting myself because the skill set, your muscles have memory, and so does your mind. Where do you think muscle memory comes from? It comes from your mind. Everything starts in your mind and your heart. So we have to renew our mind. We have to have this changed heart. And God said he's going to give us this as the gift that we received upon our sins being forgiven at Calvary through his blood. But we have to do this by volition. You have to make up in your mind. You're not going to spend the next 40 days just like they did letting some giant curse you, curse your God, and keep you in a defeated mindset. Okay? Now, of course, we go, I'm assuming you're saved, okay? So this is a conversation for saved folks. 
So I don't need to go into all that blood. I told you that. You saved, you're forgiven, the power of sin, you don't have to sin no more. But we're talking about living your life out with the time you have left in quality. Changing your mind, renewing your mind, participating in your sanctification process, enjoying the storm. Because everybody enjoyed the sunshine. But you got to learn how to see God in the storm. No, you're not sitting there wanting to be a masochist and say, God, give me some more storms. No, 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 no. You'll have enough in your life. The Bible says man is full of trouble as the sparks fly upward. Trust me, you're going to have your share of trouble. And First Peter tells us what trouble is supposed to do. Build our character. So we have to enjoy the fact that God is gracious enough to send us something that builds our character. He's trying to build the Israelites' character through the Philistines. He's trying to make them turn to him. But again, they're, you, they're operating under their own power. They have fall, saw they fall away and done some things. And they are at a point where they need a savior. They need a deliverer. Okay? Go ahead. So for 40 days. So I want to challenge you. The first challenge is for the next 40 days, we want to say things in our mind and our mouths that make us thankful, make us blessed, and are, and are willing to bless others. That's what we want to do. We want to start with those powerful. We don't want to say we got to. We're going to look at everything as a blessing and a privilege, and we get to. You get to go to work. You get to pick up your kids. You get to kiss your baby goodnight. You get to hold your grand grandkids. You get to do some things because God is so good and you get to. You get to repent. You ain't got to repent. You get to repent because God is so good. Romans 2 and 4. All right. Go ahead. And Jesse said to David, his son, take for your brothers an ephah of this parched grain and these 10 loaves and carry them quickly to the camp to your brothers. Also, take these ten cheeses to the commander of their thousands. See if your brothers are well and bring some token from them. Now Saul and they now Saul and they and all the men of Israel were in the valley of Eli, fighting with the Philistines. Mm -hmm. And David rose early in the morning and left the sheep with a keeper and took the provisions and went as Jesse had commanded him. And he came to the encampment as the host was going out to the battle line shouting the war cry, and Israel and the Philistine drew up for battle, army against army. And David left the things in charge of the keeper of the baggage and ran to the ranks and went and greeted his brothers. So let's stop right there. David, first mindset, he wants to see what's going on mm -hmm. because they're drawing up ranks. Okay, he believed the battle was finally about to start and he wants to go up to sea how his nation is going to handle fighting the battle of Goliath. So one of the first mindsets that is a great mindset to have, become curious. Don't be one that just always stick your head in the sand. Mm -hmm. Become curious. Mm -hmm. Ask questions. Go check it out. Go see what's going on. Don't always run away. Now, of course, there's times that we should. But I want to say this. There's a battle going on. He's not a fighting age. And he's going to see. Because you never know when you're curious, somebody else may get curious behind you and come along to see. Think about when Jesus came. John said, that's him. And they followed Jesus. And then Jesus turned around and asked them, what did you come to see, basically? And he said, where did you stay? He said, come and see. Their curiosity Cause them to be in a position where they can receive a revelation and have a relationship with God. They could have did like the rest of the nation because these statements of that's the Lamb of God was a public statement. That wasn't a private statement, but they caught it and they became curious. And through their curiosity, guess what the end result was? They became the apostles. I love people who love to ask questions because a person who asks questions always is going to have a, a, a better knowledge and a better relationship with God. God doesn't mind you asking him questions. Matter of fact, God would prefer that you ask him a lot of questions. So we see that David is curious. Go ahead. As he talked with them, behold, the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, came up 
out of the ranks of the Philistines mm -hmm. and spoke the same words as before. He spoke words of victory. Go ahead. And David heard him. And David heard him. Now, let's see his mindset. Go ahead. All the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and were much afraid. <laughs> so, David heard him. They heard him. So, Goliath makes this proclamation, just imagine, in a valley. And it probably echoed the same proclamation 80 times, 40 days, and he made the proclamation. David hears him. They see, heard it. And they get scared and they turn around and run away. What's the point in stepping forward when you're planning on running? I see so many people do that in their life. They step up because they got to, but they can't wait to get to run. Even in church, it's like I hear these, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to do this, I'm going to do that. You don't have to do anything. Mm -hmm. Just be who you are. Unless you want to do it, don't even talk about it. Because it's better that you don't step up than to step up and step back. He even tells us it's better to be asked up to the honorable seat than to assume that you got the title and you deserve to be there because you got the title. One of the things they tell you as a pastor, the minister coming up, it's better to be asked up than be told to sit down. So they still are afraid, but they call themselves stepping up. But their heart wasn't mean it. Their mind hadn't been changed. Nothing had changed from the previous days other than they decided to step forward in mass but then when he stepped up, they stepped back. So the, Goliath still has the undefeated mindset even the more because the ranks are running from him now. Just not a man. He asked for a man. They stepped up in mass and they, as one man, they ran away. Okay? Sometimes this, I'm going to tell you this too. Remove yourself from people who are cowards mentally. Remove yourself from people who are mental cowards. They sound like this. I can't. I'm not smart. I don't know. I'll never learn. Well, you are pronouncing these things on your mind. And you don't need to be infecting somebody else's mind with that. Amen. Can you imagine the chatter that was going on between the ranks when they saw Goliath? Yeah, I ain't going out there first. You go first. Let's do it together. Okay, everybody on three step forward and everybody start running. You know, no volunteers. You know what I'm saying? Don't volunteer for nothing. And they have a king. But Saul not stepping forward himself. And he's the leader. Go ahead. And the men of Israel said, have you seen this man who has come up? Surely he has come up to defy Israel. And the king will enrich the man who kills him with great riches and will give him his daughter and make his father's house free in Israel. And David said to the man who stood by him, what shall be done for the man who kills this Philistine and takes away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? Stop right there. David asked the question, what would be given? What what? is the motivation and they said before that the motivation is that you get the daughter you become a prince you, you what but see when you're a coward there's not enough motivation in the world that'll get you to move forward your mind ain't right see a lot of people think well they do they live their life like this if i only had this then i could do that if i only had this i will do this if i only had more of this i could do that I've watched people get what they say they needed and still don't move because their mind hasn't been changed. See, they haven't had, they don't have peace in change. Change is disrupting. And, 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 and David is saying, look, who is this who defies the, the, the nation of God and God himself that you guys are not motivated enough to move in faith? Faith doesn't mean that you're guaranteed to come out unscathed. Faith means that you understand 
you're going to come out and however you come out, God is going to get the glory. And then therefore that'll help the nation. Okay. So go ahead. And the people answered him in the same way. So shall it be done to the man who kills him? Now Eliab, his eldest brother, heard when he spoke to the men. And Eliab's anger was kindled against David. So and why is Eliab, Eliab is mad at his younger brother? Go ahead. And he said, why have you come down? And with whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness? Now, now check this out. You, he's supposed to be worried about the battle. He's worried about the sheep. See, that's a lot of people y'all do deflection like that. Instead of focusing on the task at hand, you want to talk about something that, that you're not even responsible for no more. You don't want to take responsibility for where you're at. You want to take responsibility. You want to claim where you've been. So he wants to pull rank on David like, you're supposed to be back at the sheep. What are you doing up here? Why are you up here? Who brought you? How dare you? I'm mad at you because you're not back at the sheep. But you're not mad at Goliath for cussing God. So many times our mindset causes us to believe that when we say something, it has some weight. What Eliad just said has no weight. It's a straw man argument. It means nothing. He's trying to abdicate his, his responsibility to be fighting and, and, and challenge David. David is not his enemy. Goliath is his enemy. Why would you pick on David? Because David's an easy target, person, you think. Okay? So many times the wrong mindset calls you to, to, to want to abuse other people to make yourself look big. Mm -hmm. mm. We talk about mindset now. Go ahead. Yeah. I know your presumption and the evil of your heart, for you have come down to see the battle. And David said, what have I done now? Was it not but a word? And he turned away from him toward another and spoke in the same way. Was it not but a word? And he presumed that David was evil. But where was the evil? Is? The evil was this in his brother, not in him. So many times, the wrong mindset, the wrong thought process, you will say someone else is evil that is actually good. Basically, the Bible tells us, you're going to say bitter is sweet, mm -hmm. sweet is bitter, good is evil, and evil is good. That's a mindset. He's willfully doing that. David had done nothing to deserve that. But because he's scared, he might say anything to deflect the fact that he's a coward. Go ahead. And the people answered him again as before. Mm -hmm. When the words that David spoke were heard, they repeated them before Saul, and he sent for him. And David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go and fight with the Philistines. Stop right there. David's first response is he's going to take responsibility. What did he say? Your servant will go fight with the Philistines. You see what I mean? At that moment, David activated the power of God because he was willing by faith to take on the responsibility to fight the giant. So many of you, your mindset is not a mindset of responsibility. You try to avoid, you try to run away. You're basically a mindless coward. But God is saying, I respect those who step up. I respect those who step out. I respect those who, when I say go, they go like Abraham did by faith. And he's called the father of faith. And I'm going to challenge you. We are the children of Abraham, not by, not by blood seed, but we are called the children of faith. But why are we so scared? When the father of faith, Abraham is our father of faith. We are numbered like the sands of the sea, more so than his bloodline. But we do not exercise the power of our faith in our decision-making process every day. We are so scared to make a bad decision, we make no decision, which is a bad decision. Because you can't, if we walk by faith, you stand still. And I know you're going to say, you want a sign, you want confirmation. You got the Holy Spirit in you. It's nice when you do something and somebody confirms it, but it normally it's after you've done it that it to be confirmed. Yeah. 
You're not going to get anywhere with a mindset of always waiting. And there is a point to waiting on God, but you wait on God and keep moving. You wait on God and you walk by faith. And it seems like it's two different things, but no, it's not. What you're doing is you keep trying to open doors until God say, that's the door open. That's what Paul did. He wanted to go one direction. That door was closed by the Holy Spirit. He, God didn't punish him. He wanted to go that direction. Closed. Until he found the direction of the north, south, east, and west. Until he found the direction he was supposed to go in. And that stayed open for him. So he walked by faith in each no. But you've got to go through the no's of God to get to the yes of God. That's a mindset. Go ahead. And Saul said to David, you are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for Stop. you are but a youth. Now think about this. What's the label now, Nancy? What did Saul, what did Saul just put on David? That he was a youth. That he was a youth and what else? And he was not what? Able. Okay. Why wasn't he able? Because he was young. Why aren't you able? Because you're old. Why aren't you able? Because you didn't get the education. Why aren't you able? Whatever label you want to put that limits yourself, go ahead and put it on yourself. Because God said you don't have to live with them limits. Amen. You don't have to have a relation with me that's based upon the limits that man put on you. Some of this is too good for, you know, you, you, you're not getting it. Because somebody should be understanding what I'm saying. Man labels you this, that, and the other. God says, I died. So first of all, the label of sin will be removed from you. The power of sin is removed from you. The punishment of sin is removed from you. It's always there. But you don't have to live under the accuser of the brother, which is Satan. You can live beyond that. But you have to make a volitional decision to do so. You have to tap into the power of the Holy Spirit that lies within you. I can't tap into it for you. Your mindset, not mine. Because I don't have a defeated mindset. Never have. Thank God for my parents that never gave me that. Because a lot of you have defeated mindsets because your parents gave you that. They told you you wasn't smart. They told you never amount to nothing. I mean, talk to me for real. A lot of us have went through that. Had a spouse that really put you down and didn't trust in you, didn't believe in you. So you end up being critical of yourself. You, you're talking to, think about this. You, you let them put the label on you, then you start talking to yourself. Because if I could get you to accept the label, you talk to yourself and say you can't do it. That's what the Israelites did. Mm -hmm. And now they want to take their scare, their fear, and place it on David. And it sounds logical what Saul says. You too young. Well, if I'm too young, why are y'all standing here? Why don't y'all go fight the Philistine? But you're scared. So you want to stop me because I'm young, because you don't believe I'm able, but you won't go because you believe you can. And you're the right age. And you the right age. <laughs> and you got armor. Yeah. You got all the tools to fight with, but you don't have the mindset to fight. So many Christians, same thing with you. My God. You got the tools to do marvelous things in Christ Jesus and for yourself and for your family and you don't have the mindset to fight for it. All you want to do is get it laid out for you. It ain't going to come like that. You worried about generational curse. You ain't got to worry about no generational curse when the label you put on yourself will curse you enough. The label you put, the limit you put on yourself will curse you enough. You can't keep going back 400 years, 1,000 years, you can't keep doing that because the Bible says at one point that you're going to be responsible for what you do. See, responsible. When you become responsible, you become powerful. Powerful people are responsible and accountable and consistent and committed. They, get, they, they understand there's a Goliath going to come up in their life. And they prepare all their life to have that battle. You might go through several skirmishes before you finally get to the real war that God has prepared you for. And, in, and when you conquer that, that giant, the glory of God will be manifested in your life for others. See, the battle is not yours, it's the Lord's. The God gets the glory, you get the benefit, and those around you get to participate in your victory. 
Okay, go ahead. And he has been a man of war from his youth. Mm -hmm. But David said to Saul, your servant used to keep sheep for his father. And when there came a lion or a bear and took a lamb from the flock, I went after him and struck him and delivered it out of his mouth. And if he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and struck him and killed him. Your servant has struck down both lions and bears. And this uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of them. So now David is talking a victory language. David is talking a mindset of a conqueror. David is not, and now watch this. David is not basing it upon just the nebulous, oh God, you know, the spirit. Right. He's saying, I've had practical experience in fighting. Yeah. And because God has allowed me to be in these circumstances, incidents, and accidents, I've killed, I've killed lions and bears. And when they rose up again against me, I tore their beard out. <laughs> So what David is saying, what did I say just now? I said there will be some skirmishes, some battles you get before you fight the war. God allowed David to have those victories, those battles. One, what was he doing? Being responsible for the sheep. Yeah. You see, yeah. God gave him power because he was responsible. Those battles prepared him to look at the giant like any other thing that he can conquer. He can conquer. Because I'm sure the giant was much bigger than a bear or a lion. But the giant was just as ferocious. And David, with the mindset of a victor, with the volition of one who wants to conquer and, and do it for the right motive, the motive is God. He said, because it's God, I, if I kill bears and lions for the sheep, how much more power will God give me to kill someone who's coming against his people? But David had to make a decision. It would not have been unusual for David to say, Saul, you're right, I'm too young, let me go on back home. Sure. You could have fought David for that. I want you to get out of the mindset. Just, just make him a normal young guy. Anointed and appointed by God, but still he has to make decisions for himself. But God allows you to go through stuff so down the line that which you experience, the circumstance, incident, and accident are in your mind so you can make a decision. So you are the sum of what you go through. So you have to go through some stuff so you can make it. You have to go through the storm and, 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 and weather the storm so you can make the decision for that big epic battle. And every battle, everybody tailor-made is different. But it's going to come because you're a child of God because God wants to get the glory out of you for others. Go ahead. And this uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of them for he has defied the armies of the living God. Mm -hmm. And David said, the Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. Stop right there. Mindset. David gave recognition to who really fought the battle and gave him the power. David did not claim the glory of the power that was given to him to defeat the lion or the bear. You need to acknowledge God. You need to appreciate God. You need to be thankful for God. Philippians 4, make your request be known to God with prayer, thanksgiving, and supplication. When you do this, you enter into the space I call the power of peace. And through the power of peace, you can't be defeated. David understood that even though he fought battles, somehow or another, God gave him peace as he fought the lion, as he fought off the bear, because he took responsibility for the protection of his sheep. David is a form of Jesus. And Jesus took on Satan, which is Goliath. And he wanted to protect his sheep, the nation of Israel, and all those who would believe. So what you believe about the power of God in your life is individualistic idiosyncratic. I can't make you believe what I believe. You need to believe for yourself. 
And upon believing for yourself, you can decide whether to have a life with a mindset of being victorious, a changed mindset, a renewed mind, a sanctified mind, or you can have a mindset where you are labeled by man and others and in your church. Some of you are stifled in the church you're in. You know it, but you on automatic pilot. You're not growing. You're not going nowhere. You're just stuck in your seat. And you think that's what God wanted you to do? You really believe he died so you could just be sitting there and whittling, whittling away at the, at the vine, spoiling on the vine? No, you're supposed to be a ripe fruit that's to be digested and eaten by the body that you're in so they can enjoy the gifts that you have. But 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 you let people, even in the church, so many of our churches, we try to put people in the box that we in and we enslave. But they think because we have these titles that we're not enslaved and they want to be like us, but we end up making them even worse. Let them people go. Pastors, apostles, all you people with these titles. Tell the truth. You're supposed, to be in the, you're supposed to be guiding them into the knowledge of God, not become their God. You're supposed to be their guide. And when you become their guide, you love their freedom. But they have to make up in their mind they want to be free. David made up his mind that this Philistine who cursed God would fall just like his other, the lion and the bear. He spoke these words, and I'm not, and I'm not doing this word of faith thing. He spoke these words of a conqueror because his mindset was one of one who's going to get victory. Okay, just think about this. What if David would have lost? Would he have still won? Yes, because let me tell you what happened. Would have happened? I believe this is conjecture. I watch a little boy go out there and fight somebody I'm supposed to be fighting, and even though he gets hurt, you know what? I might get brave enough to go out there and help them. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been in a situation where somebody else started something and you jumped in it to help them in any kind of way? I ain't talking about fighting per se, but they were the one who went forward. Yeah. But see, you got someone who's already went forward for you, Jesus. You, you, don't, you don't need me to go forward. One of the worst things, that, one of the things that, that really upset me with ministry because I do get upset with ministry, is the fact of a lack of confidence to go forward and do something. You don't need my approval to do what God has called you to do. You need to step out on faith and do it. If it's good for the body, it's good for the church. You want to go work at the prison? Go work at the prison. I'll fill out the paperwork, but you don't need me to go. You want to go down and feed the homeless? You, I got other stuff to do. But I will help you, endorse you, train you, and support you. But you have to have the mindset that you're going to get to do it, and you don't got to do it. Go ahead. We're almost done. I hope this is good for y'all, because we're going to be talking about this all next year. Go ahead. And Saul said to David, go. Go. May the Lord be with you. May the Lord be with you. That's the best thing Saul probably said in 40 days. <laughs> Go and let the Lord be with you. He's probably been waiting to say, think about the Saul probably been waiting to say that to all his men. And just, and just, when, they, hey, just when he about to say it, here they come running back. I, hey, I thought y'all was going to fight Goliath. No, Saul. You go. Oh, no, I, I, I need to stay back here because you know, I'm the king. Go ahead. Then Saul clothed David with his armor. He put a helmet of bronze on his head and clothed him with a coat of mail. And David strapped his sword over his armor, and he tried in vain to go, for he had not tested them. Then David said to Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not tested them. So David put them off. Then he took his staff and his hand and chose five smooth stones from the brook. Now, put check this out. He said, Saul gave him what he would go fight in. Okay, and David said, but this thing ain't, yo, the armor you giving me hasn't been tested. Okay, let me make this in real terms. Think about this. Somebody hands you a gun. Somebody hands you a box of bullets. You don't really know if they blanks or not. You put, you, you put the bullets in the gun and 
they don't work because they haven't been tested. Okay. okay? They haven't been tested. Well, think about what he's saying hasn't been tested. The faith that you fight with has not been tested, so it can't be what? Trusted. His armor was a reflection of his lack of faith. And David, when David put it on, it felt weird. Like, I can't fight with this. Yeah. Your faith that in your armor has even been tested. I don't know if it can withstand the battle because you haven't stepped out with it to fight with. Yeah. It's still clean. It's still shiny. <laughs> Matter of fact, hold on, let me take this tag off. Judean Armor Company. Okay. <laughs> Let me take the tag off. You can't fight with other people's stuff. That's one thing. Yeah. But please don't pick up somebody who's a coward stuff. Don't let them convince you that you should go fight with they, they haven't fought with themselves. It's like the word of God. The word of God is a sword. Don't trust nobody who's not skilled with the sword of the word of God to go fight with the word of God Teach you because they don't they have a swollen sword themselves. They know that we uh, they know all the catchphrases. But they haven't implemented the full armor of God in their own life. And you want me to put on what you putting on? Uh-uh. You want me to walk in the lack of victory with the labels you got on you? Uh-uh. No, thank you. I'm gonna walk under the limited grace and mercy of Jesus because he died and he said he poured out his grace and love lavishly on us. He, he just pulled it on top of you, pulled it on top of you, pulled it on top of you, and you and your mind is still the same. You still stuck. I can't, I won't, I'm not, but I want to get blessed. Yeah, you want to get blessed. That's one thing you're going to say. You want to get blessed, but you're not going to have your mindset changed to get blessed even the more. And again, I'm talking about blessing that covers every aspect of your life, your spiritual life, your social life, your marriage life, your natural life, Wherever you want to apply it, it goes across the board. Mm -hmm. right. It's just not stuck in the spiritual realm. Right. It's in your day-to-day -day dealings with each other. Your promotion on your job, the attitude you take to your job. Your mindset determines how far you go in life. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to start back in. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Then he took his staff in his hand and chose five smooth stones from the brook and put them in his shepherd's pouch. Mm -hmm. His sling was in his hand, and he approached the Philistine. Mm -hmm. And the Philistine moved forward and came near to David with his shield bearer in front of him. And when the Philistine looked and saw David, he disdained him, for he was but a youth, ruddy and handsome in appearance. And the Philistine said to David, Who's this little boy? <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? A Philistine cursed David by his gods. The Philistine said to David, "Come to me, and I will give you, I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and to the beasts of the field." Then David said to the Philistine, "You come to me with a sword and with a spear and with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts." Stop. David's mindset was a godly mindset. David didn't even say, I count on my rocks. Mm. Or his sling. <laughs> David said, you come with that to fight with. I come with the power of God mm. because I took the responsibility to accept the challenge. So I want to stop right there for a second. Mm. I want to stop right there. I want to look at something. Go to uh, go to uh, where am I at? Go to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 3. Nancy. Go to Ephesians chapter 3. And I, and I hope this is good for you guys. We're going to be talking about these narratives and looking at mindsets, motives, and methods. Uh, David's motive was to defeat the one who was cursing God, who was bringing embarrassment and to, to God's people. His inspiration was that he had fought before and had done uh, these things under the power of God. And he understood once he took responsibility, God would endow him with power. His mindset, he made decisions 
to walk by faith. Not faith, faith in, in, in a mystery, but faith in the performance of God in his path. Because of the decisions you make, God will come into your life or not. But you have to have a mindset that is willing to be challenged, willing to be tested, willing to be, be stretched, willing to be cracked. That you can put new stuff in there. Put the new wine into new wine skin. Quit trying to stuff your old, that, 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 that God's newness of the Holy Spirit in this, in this mindset that is a defeated mindset. There should never be I can't. It should be if I if I if I can't right now, I'm gonna learn how to. Amen. See the problem with the saints is you want you stop learning. Yeah. You stop wanting to learn. You stop you stop wanting to be amazed by God. Yeah. You don't come to him like a little child and look at him like a father that has a balloon that you've never seen before. You be like you're looking at the balloon and you're going, oh my God. Look, my mind is that you're awesome and that you're my father. And because of my father, you said you would give me good gifts. Mindset. Okay, Ephesians. Turn to Ephesians, you guys. 3 and 20. I know I'm not going to get through all this lesson. I hope this is good. I hope you guys are enjoying this because we're going to be talking about this. Go ahead. Ephesians 3 and 20. And 21. Now to him who was able... To do far more abundantly beyond all that we ask or think, according to the power that works within us. To him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. So listen to this. To him. To him who is able. God is able, meaning he has enough power, he has enough resources, he can't fail. Because if I'm not able, that means I can fail. But because he has the ability and the power to him who is able, God in us, who is able to what? To do far, to do far more abundantly than all that we could ask, volition, asking, or what? Thinking. According to what? The power. The power. Where is the power? In us. In us. So if you got stinking thinking, you can't access the power. Yeah. So it's not a bit, it's not about God hasn't given it to you because he gives it to us liberally. The issue is how do you think? How do you how do you, what comes out your mouth? What is in your heart? Are you defeated before you even get started in the battle? Because that which seems so Goliathy or so large is so insurmountable in your mind that you believe your God is not able. When a saint of God acts as if God can't, don't you know that's almost like to, to me it's like a sin? Because the Bible says to know to do good and don't do it, it is sin. So to put a limit on God because you feel limited is a sin. Mm -hmm. Don't let, don't put your labels on God. Because he said he's giving you power. He's giving you a sound mind. Even in that scripture, he said he gave you power. But you access the power by stepping up and wanting to be accountable and responsible for your own soul salvation. You need to work it out. You need to work on changing your mindset. And that's what we're going to work on next year. We're going to work on biblically allowing the Holy Spirit and working with the Holy Spirit in our sanctification process to renew our mind. We're going to get rid of the dead and bring in the living. We're going to get rid of the dead thoughts, the dead weight, and we're going to get rid of some dead folk. And we're not going to let no label that's put upon us by man stop us from living an abundant life in God. Amen. And I guarantee you, when you start living the life of a Philippians 4 saint to God, and you make your request be known to God, 
regardless of the outcome because God is going to receive the glory because you're going to step up and do things for the glory of God. And guess what? You're going to have peace. Finally, you're going to have peace. Finally, you're going to know the power of having peace. So I want to encourage you today. You go ahead and stay you ready. I want to encourage you today. I want you to think about this. So let me pray. Oh, grace Heavenly Father, I just thank you. I thank you for your word. I thank you for your people. Continue to watch over us and give us the mindset. I always want you to be encouraged. I always want you to be blessed. And I always want you to be at peace. But more importantly, I want you to begin the 40-day change of your mind so you can conquer the giant that's in between your ears. Peace. Thank you for tuning in to today's Encouraging Words. If these words have inspired you please take the time to support the Encouraging Word for today with a donation and your prayers. We want to thank you in advance and would like to hear from you. Contact us at Sutton968 at gmail.com or check us out on Walk in Truth Radio Network YouTube. Thank you for listening and consider subscribing and sharing. We worship at the Universal Church of Jesus Christ Building, located at 2301 Wallace Avenue, Overland, Missouri, 63114. The times of worship are 8.30 a.m. on Sunday and 7 p.m. on Tuesday. You may also join us on Facebook at the Walk in Truth Christian Fellowship page or the Walk in Truth Radio Network YouTube page. All are welcome and we look forward to teaching you the truth about God, teaching you to be committed, accountable, and responsible to the things of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit.